Lord, you're always faithful. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you never leave us, you never forsake us. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and your unfailing love in our lives. And uh, we commit this time to you now, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning to you. I wish that we were together, uh, but at the same time, I'm grateful for uh, the technology that allows us to be together online. Uh, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 2 this morning, if you want to turn there in your Bible for me. Uh, Sunday mornings, we're going through the book of Genesis, uh, verse by verse, as you know, and I, I thought it would be good just for us to be back in Genesis today and um, just to have that consistency for us and just the, you know, the steadiness of God's word for us. So we're going to be in Genesis chapter 2 this morning. Um, it's up to you if you stand or not. <laughs> I have no way of knowing if you're standing. But uh, Genesis chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And then God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made and Lord, as we open your word now, we pray that you would minister to each of us, Lord, that you would have um, just a, a unique and special word for each of us today out of these verses. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, open our eyes to see the wondrous things in your word. We pray and ask, Lord, that you would open our ears to hear your voice. Lord, open our hearts to receive your word today. And I pray and ask that your spirit would be upon me to teach your word this morning. And we pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now, at our Thursday night Bible study this week, I, I mentioned that uh, as we study systematically through the Bible, wherever we are in the scriptures, that is where we are as a church, wherever we are in the word, that's the word for where uh, we are in this past Thursday night. I, I believe the Lord really spoke to us out of his word. We were in Lamentations chapter three, and the Lord really provided a word of encouragement to us out of Lamentations chapter three. Uh, in, in that passage in Lamentations, Jeremiah, the prophet uh, shifted his focus from the crisis his nation was facing, and he began to focus on the character of God and he focused on God's mercy and God's unfailing love and God's compassion and God's faithfulness. And we talked about on Thursday night how we can do the same thing in the midst of the times that we're living in today in the current situation uh, that our nation is facing and just focusing on the character of God and not on the things that are happening around us. Uh, well, today in our study of Genesis, uh, God once again, I believe, speaks to us out of his word, right where we are in his word. God speaks to us and speaks into our current circumstances. And in this passage today in Genesis, we are reminded to rest in God. To rest in God. In, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 23, it says a word spoken in due season, how good it is and how good God's word is and how good this word is to us to just just rest in him. A very timely word for us in this season. Look again at verse one for me. It says, thus, the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And this is a summary of the work of the six days of creation. If you remember back in chapter 1, verse 1, it says that God created the heavens and the earth. And now we're told in chapter 2, verse 1, that God finished the heavens and the earth, including everything in them. And then it says in verse 2, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, 
which he had done. So God finished his work and then God rested. And when it says God rested, it doesn't mean that God was tired. Uh, It's not like God had to recuperate from creating the heavens and the earth. And now he's got a sore back and a and an aching shoulder. And he you know, doesn't say on the seventh day, God took ibuprofen and laid on a heating pad. Uh, That's that's not what it means here. Uh, In fact, in the Psalms, in Psalm 121, verse 4, it tells us that God does not become weary like we do. When it says here that God rested on the seventh day, it simply means that God stopped working. He stopped creating. The work was finished. The word rested here in the Hebrew, it means to cease. God ceased working. It's from the same Hebrew word that we get the word Sabbath. Sabbath. So Genesis 2 is really the foundation of the Sabbath or the Sabbath day or the Sabbath rest. Although keeping the Sabbath is not commanded here in Genesis 2, this is the basis of it here in the creation account, as we're going to see here in a few minutes. I look at verse 3. So then God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it. Your translation might say he made it holy. He made it holy. This word sanctified or holy, it means to consecrate. It means to separate. It means to set apart. And it has the idea of exalting or elevating something as sacred or hallowed. Uh, This is the first time, by the way, that we find in the Bible this word, this idea of sanctification or or making something holy. This is the first time in the Bible that we see that God consecrates something, that he separates something, that he sets something apart and designates it as sacred. And what is it that God consecrates? What is it that God sets apart for the, the first thing here that God sets apart, what is it? It's time. It's time. Here God sets apart the seventh day of the week. He consecrates it. And He says, this day is holy. This day is holy. Now, I, I said a minute ago that this provides the foundation of the Sabbath day. Uh, The command to keep the Sabbath is found in Exodus chapter 20. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Uh, And I'll read it to you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. You don't have to turn there, but you can just listen. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So God in the creation here on the seventh day, He sanctifies it. He says, this day is holy. This time. I want you to designate this time and set this time apart. And then in Exodus 20, in the Ten Commandments, he he says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, keep it consecrated, keep it separated, keep it set apart. And then he explains, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In other words, the seventh day is the Sabbath and that belongs to the Lord your God. He says, in it you shall do no work. You nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your your stranger who is within your gates. For, here's why, because in six days... The Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. Now, in Exodus 31, we're told that the Sabbath was a specific sign between God and and Israel. And so we're, we're not really obligated to keep the Sabbath day per se. Uh, today. However, I think there's some wonderful lessons for us regarding 
the Sabbath day and regarding setting aside time and what the meaning of the Sabbath day is. I think there's some wonderful, valuable lessons for us in it. Uh, the children of Israel, again, according to Exodus 20, they were to they were commanded to work six days and then rest the seventh day. And they were to dedicate the seventh day to God. Once again, God says, I, I want you to consecrate this time. I want you to set this time aside for me. You, you can work six days, do all your work in the six days. But on the seventh day, this one day of the week, I don't want you doing any work. I don't want you busy. I want you to just set this time aside for me and dedicate it to me. And so one day a week, no work is to be done. One day a week, everything stops. One day a week, I want you to push pause. Or maybe even in the time that we're living in, I want you to shut everything down. So one day a week now, God says to the children of Israel, I, I want you to shut this time down. I want you to set this time aside. And I want you, and this is important, I want you on that one day, I want you to remember the God who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then rested on the seventh day. On, on the Sabbath that God established with the children of Israel, they, they were to reflect really on Genesis chapter 1 and the creation account and the God who created the heavens and the earth. E even still today, when Jewish people celebrate the Sabbath each week, they pray certain prayers, certain blessings, and in those blessings they refer to God as the Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. Their mind goes back to the creation account. That's what God intends. He, he, he wants his people one day a week. He, he wants them to designate a time. Where they remember that God is the one who made the heavens and the earth, that God is the one who is the ruler of the universe. It doesn't say you can do anything you want on this day. You can think about whatever you want. Just take one day off. It's not really about just rest and not working and not being active. It's about turning your focus on that day to the God who made the heavens and the earth. The Lord of the universe. And why does God do this? Why does God command his people to set aside time every week to reflect on who God is and what God did way back in Genesis chapter one? The reason he does this and listen to me, listen, please, is because we need it. We need it. We need this reminder. I would say we really need this reminder in our day. You know, in the New Testament, Jesus tells us the Sabbath was created for man not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is for our benefit. Uh, again, we're not under the law. We're not, uh, we're not commanded to keep the Sabbath as, as followers and Christians and followers of Jesus Christ. But it does benefit us. It does benefit us to stop and consider our God who created the heavens and the earth and what that means for us. It is beneficial, especially in these uncertain days that we are living in. And let me just say, too, that uh, it is good for us to designate time and to set aside time out of our busyness to stop everything. And to consecrate a set time in our lives where we just reflect upon God and who he is and we spend time in his word and we we spend time uh, praying. It is it is good for us. It benefits us because it changes our focus. It, it changes our perspective. On us, on ourselves and on our life and on our circumstances and our situation that we find ourselves in. And, and I would encourage you to set aside time. 
every day. Set aside time for God. To focus on Him and to think about Him and His character and who He is and what He has done. The Creator of the heavens and the earth. The Lord of the universe. You know, in Isaiah chapter 26, it says, You will keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Keep your thoughts on God. Keep your mind on Jesus Christ. Set your mind on things above where Christ is. And not on the things of this earth. Set time aside. Each day. Each week. Designated time. Sacred time. Where you are just focused on Jesus. And who he is. And what he's done. Keep your thoughts on him. So what I want to do is just briefly here uh, remind us this morning of, of a few things that Genesis 1 teaches us about God. He, he, he does, you know, he does the creation, six days of creation, seventh day. Now God says, I want you to sanctify this day and I want you to dedicate this day and Dedicate this day to me and remember that I'm the God who created the heavens and the earth. So I just want to go over a few things that Genesis 1 teaches us about God. First of all, Genesis 1 shows us that God is sovereign. That God is sovereign. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the Lord of all. He is sovereign over this world he is sovereign over your life. He is sovereign over your family. God is still on his throne in heaven, ruling over everything. Now, if you turn the news on, it doesn't look like it. But according to the scriptures, God is on his throne. And he is ruling over everything. He is Lord of all. You know, in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, uh, the king of Israel, uh, na a king named Uzziah, he died. And King Uzziah was a, a good king. He was a godly king. The people of the nation loved him. Uh, the nation prospered under Uzziah. Uh, king Uzziah reigned for 50 plus years. And so for 50 years, they had a good king. The nation prospered. And then Uzziah died. And when King Uzziah died, the nation was worried about their future, what would happen to their country going forward, much like people are worrying today. And it was at that time, in the midst of all of that fear in the nation, all of that uncertainty in the nation, that God gave Isaiah the prophet a vision of God seated on his throne in heaven. In Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. God was still on the throne. The nation was fearful. The nation was worried about the future, but God was still on his throne, and God is still on his throne today. So rest in him. Rest in God. Rest in the God who made the heavens and the earth and who is sovereign. I want you to understand that God is not in heaven right now pacing the floor and biting his nails with worry. He's on his throne. He's seated on his throne, high and lifted up. So one thing that we see with Genesis 1, that Genesis 1 reminds us is that God is sovereign and he is still sovereign. He is still on the throne. Another thing we, remi we are reminded of is found in verse 1 of chapter 2. Look at verse 1 again. In verse 1, we're told that God finished the heavens and the earth. That's a good reminder for us. God finishes what He starts. God finishes what He starts. He, God has a plan for this world. He has a plan for each of us. And His plan was brought to completion. And His plan for this world, His plan for you and me, it will be brought to completion. How do I know? Because He finished the heavens and the earth. He completed the heavens and the earth. God's plan for you and God's plan for me will not be derailed by a virus or by a downturn in the economy 
or anything else. God finishes what he starts. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, God began a work in you and God will finish that work that he began. Philippians chapter one, verse six says, for I am confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He'll begin. He'll finish the work that he began in you. He'll finish what he started in our lives. Hebrews chapter 12 says that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So we, we can rest today knowing that God will finish what he started. Just like he started the heavens and the earth and he finished the heavens and the earth. God will finish what he started in this world and God will finish what he started in your life and what he started in my life. A, a third thing that Genesis chapter one reminds us of, and, and this is important. It reminds us that we are created by God. That, that we don't really exist independent of God. We're not autonomous. We were created by him. And our life depends upon him. Uh, the Bible says that God holds in his hand the breath of every person. And, and again, God says, I, I want you to work six days. I want you to take this one day. I want you to consecrate it. I want you to set it apart uh, and, and I want you to just dedicate it to me and who I am as the creator of the heavens and the earth, as the Lord of the universe. And I want you to do this every week because it's important, because it benefits you to be reminded that God is sovereign. That he's on his throne, it it's, it's benefits you to be reminded that God finishes what he starts and it benefits us to be reminded that we were created by him. And that I'm not an independent being. And that I'm not autonomous. In this world. And what does that do that that you know what that does it humbles us. To be reminded that. He holds my next breath in his hand and in him I live and move and have my being. And that my life is, is not in my control, that it's in his control. My life is in his hands. And it, and it, and it humbles us. And again, it's, it's good for us to be reminded of these things, of his sovereignty, that he completes what he starts, and that, uh, th that I don't even control my next breath or my next heartbeat. He does. And that my life is in his hands. Another thing that we are reminded of in Genesis is the rest that we have in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our rest. Jesus Christ is our, our true Sabbath. We find our rest in, in Jesus. In, in the New Testament, for example, in Colossians, uh, we're told that the Old Testament Sabbath day, the Old Testament Sabbath rest was really just a shadow. It was a, a, a type. The reality is Jesus Christ. He's the real thing. He's the real rest. He's the one that we find rest in. He's the reality. Through his death on the cross, we can rest when it comes to our salvation, when it comes to the forgiveness of our sins. We don't have to work our way into heaven. We don't have to try to earn God's forgiveness by our good works. The Bible says that Jesus purged our sins and then sat down at the right hand of God because the work of our salvation was finished. He did the work for us on the cross. Then he ascended back to heaven and he sat down. He rested because the work was completed. He's our rest. He's our rest when it comes to salvation. And he is our place of rest in life. You know, in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus actually invites us to come to him for rest. And he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus invites us. He invites you and he invites me to bring our burdens to him, to bring our worries to him. To bring our cares to him. And he promises us if we do that, if you do that, if I do that, that he will give us rest. He'll give us rest for our soul, real rest, real peace. The Bible describes it as a as a peace that passes understanding. Peace in a time when it it doesn't make sense to have peace. Peace in a time when we should be freaked out. And Jesus offers us this peace. He offers us rest from our worries and rest from our anxieties and rest from our fears and our cares. We can bring it all to Jesus. Jesus takes our worries from us. He takes our burdens from us and he gives us rest in its place. The Bible tells us to cast our cares upon him. To cast our worries upon him and he will give us rest. And so as we look at Genesis, we are reminded of these things. That God is sovereign. He's still on the throne. He's he's not worried about what's happening in the world. That he finishes what he starts. He's going to finish what he started in this world. He's going to finish what he started in you. He's going to finish what he started in me. It, It reminds us that we are created by him and our life is in his hands. And it reminds us of the rest that we have available to us in Jesus Christ. And that we can bring all of our worries to him. All of our concerns. All of our fears. He wants you to bring them to him. And he'll give you rest for your soul. During, during this season that we, we seem to be going into as, as a nation. I want to encourage you to be deliberate about designating time for God in your life, seeking Him, thinking on Him and who He is, thinking on His character, thinking on what He has done for you and saving you and calling you out of darkness and giving you His Holy Spirit and giving you an inheritance in heaven and all of the great things that He has done. Be, be deliberate and setting a sign Setting aside designated time in your life each day where you can just focus on Him. And and not on the things going on, not on the things in your life, but just focused on Him. Uh, I I would say too, even as, you know, and I don't say this to be funny, but even even as. you know, there's all this talk of social distancing and locking down. And I think that we're all going to find a lot of extra time on our hands. Redeem that time. Redeem that time that you've been, been given to draw near to Jesus Christ and dwell on who he is and rest in him. Just rest in him. And Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the encouragement that we have received from your word today. Lord, it just seems like these things are happening so fast all of a sudden in our world. We're thankful, Lord, to be reminded today that you're sovereign that you're still on your throne in heaven. We're thankful, Lord, to be reminded that you finish what you start. And we can be confident that you're going to finish the work that you've begun. 
We're thankful, Lord, to be reminded of the fact that you hold each of our lives in your hand. Our very next breath belongs to you. We're thankful, Lord, of the reminder today that our rest is in you. You are our rest. We're thankful, Lord, that you've invited us to bring our cares to you and our worries and our burdens. And you'll take them and give us rest for our souls. Lord, help us to redeem the time that we've been given to just focus on you. Help us to set our, heart, our hearts on things above where you are and not on the things of this earth. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.